and and a person who's truly engaging repentance will go through the feelings involved in the law of compensation. Yes. Now, God's laws in, are operating in the same way that they were operating for forgiveness mm -hmm. as they do with repentance. Mm -hmm. In other words, there's a heightening of the law uh, or a heightening of its outcome, the it, more resistance we have. It's operation to expose the problem. Yes. Namely. So, so we could basically say in answer to this question that a person needs to first watch the section that we've given as to what it feels like when God's laws operate to motivate forgiveness. Yes. So that, this, that all applies. Yes, well, there we talked about the, the law of attraction events yep. acting upon the hurt, the resistance to the hurt within us. Correct. So here we'd be talking about the law of attraction events operating on our resistance to seeing the hurt we've, ha we've created for others. To others and ourselves. To others and ourselves. Yes, yep. yes, to others and ourselves and our environment. And the attraction... Might, might not be just people. It could also be things, animals, plants, birds, creation. Yep. What we've done to everything... Yes. It's not just two people now. And the, the proportion or the extent of the event yes. is going to be proportionate to our resistance. Yes. Not necessarily the size of the harm we've created. Yes. Because sometimes we... Well, usually, interestingly, okay. the size of the harm we created is also proportionate to our resistance. Uh-huh. Yeah, that makes sense. So... You can see when it comes to repentance, quite often the events have to be quite powerful mm. because God does measure the size of the event that we did, mm -hmm. the compensatory part of the pain, if you like. Yeah. So you could say, I, so I'm attracting events that measure both the compensatory requirements mm -hmm. and the resistance added together. Mm -hmm. And that's how much the law is going to have to create an event to trigger it. An addition of the two, both mm -hmm. the compensatory effect and my resistance to it are added together. You see, if I can give an example of the compensatory effect so we can understand the linkage. In the compensatory effect, there is a measure of intensity of what I did to somebody. Yes. I did damage to them and it caused a certain level of intensity of emotional harm in them. Mm -hmm. It caused a certain level of damage to my environment. It caused a certain damage to myself. And all of those feelings have been perpetrated towards myself. They entered myself. God, the law, God through the law made those feelings enter me. Yes. And it's proportionate. So if I'm in this shopping center and I accidentally run into someone with my shopping trolley, yeah. there's a compensator effect. That is vastly different to if I go into the shopping centre with a shotgun and shoot someone. Correct. The compensation is going to be vastly Massively different. Massively different, yes. obviously. One is yes. an accident that didn't harm anybody permanently. The other is an accident that harmed a lot it's of lives. It's not an accident. And it's it's a, not an accident. Yeah. Harmed a lot of yeah. lives. So obviously the pain associated with it is going to be quite high when we come to feel it. Yeah. That's the pain that's going to be there already for us to feel. Yes, automatic that I shoot someone, that pain's that on pain's my soul. That bang, there. Yep. It's going to be there, it's going to stay there, and it's going to have to be felt, and it's going to be quite intense because it's the addition of all the pains of every single person that was harmed by my event. Yes. So if I've murdered 5,000 people, the compensatory right. effects are massive. Yes. yes. You follow? Yep. Yep. So here we go. We've we got this massive compensatory effect now that's built in. On top of that, we've got our resistance to feeling it. Yes. Which is now on top of that. <laughs> yes. Now, now there has to be other events that happen. Yes. That trigger us into realizing these things. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be pretty massive events. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, is it possible that I desire then to become sensitive to the pain that I've caused to others, mm -hmm. which will include the compensation? thus reducing my resistance, mm -hmm. would that affect the size of the attraction event? Do you follow where I'm not, going Not a large question? amount because the compensatory side of the, of the event is much, much larger now because of what we've done. The compensatory part of the event is a, a large portion of our pain. But is it possible, say, that I've... <sighs> 
Uh, I've shot a bunch of people in the shopping centre. I go to prison. I stew in my juices for 18 months. And then somebody at the dinner table starts talking about how they've shot other people. But I've already, that's an attraction event. But I've already developed enough, like, desire to feel about that issue that it it helps me connect to the pain. Or it, well, that's true. It can do. But, but it's going to have to be, like, honestly, for a person who purposefully chose an action that was unloving, mm -hmm. that harmed a person, another person to such a massive degree, yeah. it's very, very difficult for them to enter a state of repentance. Because they believe fully in the act they took. Yes. So, and they have a whole series of justifications. A for, huge amount of justifications. The, otherwise, they wouldn't have taken the action. Correct. Yep. They would never have done something so massive without there being a huge number of justifications. So then, given the way that God's laws operate, so I know many women who've had abortions. Yes. Which is quite a willful act. It is. Many of them had conscience pangs before, during and after doing it, at which they could override completely. They had a lot of internal justification for doing it. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. God's laws must be operating then because there's a large compensation for such an act. Yeah, it's a murder. God's laws must be operating to bring the massive law of attraction events constantly. Why do they remain unaware because the average woman on this planet thinks it's her right to use her body ever any way she feels fit. But wouldn't God's laws be wanting her to see that? Of course, of yeah. course. But if everyone around you agrees with your perspective. They kind of drown out God's laws. Well, no, you have to drown God's out laws, your own but... conscience. As you know, most women who have had abortions drown out their conscience quite massively. Yes. And they use justification such as fear in particular. Yes. And this is a big problem. Women are, women are frequently using fear as a massive justification to have an to abortion. To sin, yeah. To sin, a yeah. massive sin. Yeah. Uh, from God's perspective, it yeah. harms the life of another person. And so uh, women constantly use this justification. If, and, and as I've said to you pri in private, women will march down the street mm. for their right to have abortion, mm -hmm. right? Now, if men march down the street for their right to murder, it would be considered an outrage. Mm. But women marching down the street for their right to have an abortion, men and women approve of. Mm. So this tells you that society's collective viewpoint of it yes. is massively flawed. Yeah. And since it's massively flawed, the woman's conscience is going to be massively damaged. Yes. So how then would we see God's laws operating because this is this question is about what it's like as god's laws operate upon people to, around this well, god's laws are still operating <clears throat> they they are still having an effect on every one of those women who yep. just like it's having an effect on a person who's in prison for murder yep but because the woman's not in prison and because the woman has the acceptance of her peers and mm -hmm. because the woman has the acceptance or the general acceptance of society the woman now has a lot of methods that mm -hmm. she can choose to detune from the act. To detune from the pain of God's laws operating upon her. Not only upon her, but also upon her children that she aborted. Yes. If she could feel them, she would never want to do it again. Yes. If she could feel the damage that was done to them and how long it's taken for them to overcome the damage, she would never do it again. Mm. But she's detuned from all of that. Mm. Purposefully detuned from all of that, mm. I might add so that she doesn't have to feel about any of those things. Mm. So while many women's conscience may partially or a little bit bother them, mm. the reality is there's a huge amount of motivation there for them to completely ignore their conscience mm. and completely ignore the pain that comes through the compensatory effects until they arrive in the spirit world. Mm. Mm. And then, of course, they're presented with those shocks. And for many women, they are completely shocked. They think they had a great life where they had one or two abortions and they think they had a great life and they, did, they were a good person and everything, and they arrive in the same condition as a person who murdered one or two people. Mm. 